It is surprising to most people that frogs and toads can meet the challenges to live and breed in the Sonoran Desert. Amphibians lead a double life in which their larvae or tadpoles are aquatic and the adults are terrestrial. Since they have soft, thin, permeable skin, which is very susceptible to drying out, most of them live near water. Yet, over 20 amphibians have been found in the Sonoran Desert. So far, three amphibians have been documented in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve, the red-spotted toad, the Sonoran Desert toad, and the Couch's spadefoot, a toad relative. The main reason for their success? Avoidance of the extreme heat and aridity. These amphibians spend nine to ten months of the year underground. Some excavate burrows that can go down as far as three feet. Plus, they are nocturnal, active when intense sun is gone and the temperatures are cooler. During the summer rainy season, these toads and spadefoots hastily reproduce in temporary or permanent pools before returning to their underground chamber. At seven inches long, the hefty Sonoran Desert Toad is one of the largest toads in North America. It has a grain-green back and a creamy underside. A few white tubercles, or bumpy warts, are found just past the mouth, and several large bumps exist on the back legs. The large raised paratoid gland behind the eye secretes toxins as a defense against predators. Dog owners beware, because the toxin of the Sonoran Desert Toad is highly potent and can be fatal to your pup. The Couch's spadefoot is a much smaller animal with smooth skin. Unlike toads, it has vertical pupils and no paratoid gland. Each hind foot has a dark, sickle-shaped ridge or spade that's used for digging. To say it reproduces rapidly is an understatement. Cued by the vibrations of rain and thunder during a monsoon storm, spadefoots emerge from their burrows. The males sound like bleeding sheep as they call to attract a mate. One female may lay as many as 3,000 eggs in those temporary pools. In as little as 15 hours, the eggs hatch. Tadpoles last less than two weeks before they metamorphose into toadlets. At this point, they gorge on as many invertebrates as they can before they dig themselves underground. Unlike amphibians, the reptiles of the Sonoran Desert have a completely terrestrial lifestyle. Two main factors allow reptiles to live in places and in ways that amphibians can't. First, they have waterproof skin with scales. They also have amniotic eggs or eggs with an internal membrane and a hard or leathery shell. These hatchlings look like miniature versions of the adults, so they don't need to live near water sources like amphibians. As we look at some individual species, you'll see that desert reptiles have even more interesting adaptations to living in the hot, dry desert. Desert tortoises can grow to about 14 inches long. They have flattened front legs for digging. Their sturdy, elephant-like hind legs help them maneuver the rocky hillsides of their habitat. These solitary creatures are often sighted wandering the Bajada at the Gateway Trailhead. Wild tortoises can live for up to 40 years and spend most of those years within a few miles of where they hatched. Annual rings that grow on the scutes of the carapace, or top of the shell, can be counted to estimate their age. Tortoises are primarily crepuscular.
active dawn and dusk, or diurnal, adjusting their activity to the temperature and season. During the extreme heat of summer and cold of winter, they retreat to shallow burrows or crevices in the banks of washes. These toothless animals are generally herbivores that get much of the water they need from the plants they eat. Their bladder is like a canteen and stores up to 40% of their weight in waste and water that is reabsorbed. If you see one, don't pick it up. These are protected species in Arizona, and it's always safer to watch wildlife than to handle it. More importantly, a desert tortoise's common defense behavior is to empty the precious water from their bladder. During drier periods, this can be extremely dangerous for the tortoise. The Sonoran Tiger Whiptail, along with the Western Side Blotched, Schatz Tree Lizard, and the Western Long-Tailed Brush Lizard, are the most common lizards found in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve. The Whiptail is about four inches long, with an even longer, thin tail, and a pointed snout. The juveniles have a blue tail. This fast lizard hunts by sight and sound. It is constantly moving, foraging on the ground for invertebrates and smaller lizards in the leaf litter and under plants and rocks. As it feeds, it will shift between sun and shade to regulate its body temperature. Many populations of whiptail species reproduce by parthenogenesis. In this asexual form of reproduction, females lay eggs that have not been fertilized by males. The offspring are all female clones. The most common snake found in the preserve is the western diamondback, Arizona's largest rattlesnake. It can reach lengths up to six and a half feet long and has diamond-shaped blotches on its back and bold black and white bands on the tail. Western diamondbacks can be active any time the conditions are favorable. During hibernation, they will retreat to rocky areas or pack rat nests for refuge. This predator sits coiled along rodent trails and waits for small mammals, birds, or other prey to pass within striking distance. Of the 13 species of rattlesnakes in Arizona, four make the preserve their home. Rattlesnakes use their loreal pit, a heat-sensing orchid located between the nostril and the eye, to detect the heat given off by prey. Their venom is a toxic saliva unique to pit vipers. It's injected through long, hollow, retractable fangs. About 20% of defensive strikes are dry, meaning no venom is released. The rattle is made of keratin, the same protein material found in fingernails, feathers, and hooves. The sound made by rattlesnakes is produced as the rattle segments move back and forth 60 or more times per second. Sorry, but you cannot tell the age of a rattlesnake by counting the segments of its rattle. Not all the snakes found in the preserve are venomous. The harmless California king snake is an opportunistic feeder whose diet actually includes rattlesnakes. The snoren gopher, or bull snake, is a constrictor that is often mistaken for a diamondback rattlesnake because of its similar body markings. It will also mimic some defensive behaviors of rattlesnakes, including rising up in a striking position, flattening its head into a triangle, hissing, and vibrating its tail. The coachwhip snake gets its name from the braided appearance of the scales. This long and slender snake is also fast. It has been clocked moving at over three and a half miles per hour. When threatened, its first means of protection is to flee. It may fake death by staying motionless, but 
it can be aggressive, first hissing and then repeatedly biting if handled. The herptofauna, or amphibians and reptiles, of our desert are a fascinating group of animals. If you would like to know more about them, a complete list of these and other animals and plants of this area can be found in The Flora and Fauna of Scottsdale's McDowell Sonoran Preserve, published by the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. Other recommended sources include A Field Guide to Amphibians and Reptiles in Arizona by Thomas C. Brennan and Andrew T. Hollycross, and A Natural History of the Sonoran Desert, produced by the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum.